Hello everybody and welcome back. As always, I am Mateo311 and this is your one channel for everything VR related. Today, we're going to be talking about a huge array of different VR accessories. Everything from simple controller covers to gun stops, haptic vests, and even motion simulation chairs. There's definitely something for everybody. Hopefully this will help some of your purchasing decisions or just inform you about some products you didn't know existed. There are of course timestamps and links in the description. And before we get started, this video is brought to you by Kiwi Design, your one stop for all VR accessories. Are you looking for a Quest 2 Elite strap that won't suddenly snap on you? Or a face pad that won't irritate your skin? Well, Kiwi has you covered. They carry a large array of accessories from cable management systems to replacement facial covers. There are links in the description and don't forget to use my affiliate code to help support this channel. Wait, 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 stop, stop. How can we do this video when I am sponsored by Kiwi? That is a huge conflict of interest. Well, don't worry guys, Kiwi is a sponsor of the channel, but nothing in this video is actually sponsored directly by Kiwi. This isn't actual reviews, and you'll notice in a lot of cases, I'm actually recommending something different than a Kiwi product. I hope you guys believe me, but as I say that, I also have to mention that as of today, Kiwi has a 25% sale going. I know, this timing is suspect but I swear it just worked out that way. Okay, so let's not waste any more time and start going over these items. Now I'm gonna list them in order from least to most valuable. What I mean is, are you gonna get the biggest bang for your buck, the return on your investment? Now, some of these items are extremely subjective, like comfort mods. So I'm just gonna give you a few different options to check out, and some will be good for you, some aren't. I have some major preferences that might not be the same as yours. Okay, so let's start this off with things I consider to be basically just cosmetic. There's not a huge benefit to them. Things like a full skin for your Oculus Quest or other headset, and even controller covers. Currently, I'm holding a Kiwi Quest 2 controller cover, and it does have a strap. Now, I have to say, I really don't get the point of these controller covers. I feel like they often cause more issues than they have benefits. They make it a little bit harder to change the battery in some cases, even though this one does have a compartment to get to the battery. These hand straps, which are nice, especially if you're used to a valve index, what ends up happening though sometimes is they pinch the webbing of your hand and they might not be comfortable for some people at all. And then the cover is there for what? Is the controller too slippery for you? Okay, in that case, then a silicone cover may help. Personally, I've never had issues with super sweaty palms and controllers flying out of my hand and it really doesn't provide any additional benefit from impact. Uh, you're still gonna break the controller, the ring is not protected, and even if it had silicone on it, it wouldn't be protected. Maybe you'll stop a couple scuffs here and there, but you're more likely to scuff your wall or something you hit. So, I honestly don't see the point to these items. Now I actually feel the same when it comes to skins and covers for your VR headset. You might run into a serious issue and that is on headsets like the Oculus Quest or anything that has inside out tracking, if the cover doesn't fit perfectly, it may impact your tracking. It also provides very little benefit from damage to the device. I don't know why you would be scuffing the outside of your headset, what you're headbutting mid game. Maybe it might prevent some fading if you're keeping it in sunlight, which you shouldn't be doing anyway. So unless you're really looking for a cosmetic mod just to make your headset look cooler, go for it, but it might come at the expense of damaging your tracking in the process. While we're on the topic of cosmetics, I will mention VR headset stands. That's all they really are, guys, unless you're going out and buying one that has a charging station built into it, which is only for wireless headsets like the Oculus Quest and Quest 2. There's really no function, and it's just to tidy up your room, make it look a little bit nicer. I've tried about eight different stands, just go with either the cheapest one or the one that looks the prettiest to you. It doesn't really matter. It is cool to have a headset stand, but it's nothing special. Sticking with nothing special, we have an LCD mod for the Valve Index. Yeah, it definitely looks cool. You can make it say whatever you want, flash, smiley face, it's all cool. The one we're looking at right now is actually from Minidex. This is the Mini Dex LCD, and I'll be honest with you, I don't recommend this model because it's kind of flimsy. From taking it in and out, it's actually coming out of the plastic case itself. 
and it's fine it's not gonna break it just you know for spending 30 or more dollars on an item like this it's a little hard to recommend you might eventually rip the LCD panel out of the plastic casing also there's no off switch so even when my computer's off this thing just keeps going okay so let's get into some items that are a lot more useful and that is comfort mods I'll start off with replacement facial inserts. I have one here from VR Cover, and I have one here from Kiwi. These both use PU leather, and I'll be honest with you, I don't like them. I do not like the way that material feels on my skin, but for you, it might be a huge benefit. It is definitely much softer, a lot more cushion than what you get out of the box with an Oculus Quest 2. And yes, the Oculus Quest 2 material can be scratchy, it does irritate my skin. Now they are giving away free silicone covers, so you might wanna look into that if you are getting irritated by your Oculus Quest. And your major options are really silicone or this PU leather. Personally, I don't like the sensation of either, and the Quest does scratch my face, so I can't really win. I do love my Valve Index. Whatever material they use there is my favorite. It has the right combination of sweat absorption yet not becoming a complete sponge like something you'd get with any of the Vive headsets. They use pure foam. So VR cover, Kiwi, you might want to look into them. These feel just about the same, to be honest, to me at least, but I prefer more of a fabric material and they're just not for me, but there are different comfort mods. If you're someone who has an original Oculus Quest, I actually got a top strap, which was huge for me. It actually redistributes the weight because the original Oculus Quest is very front heavy. And once I put that thing on, I never took it off. It was just a huge benefit. Studio Form also sells counterweights for your headset and other different modifications. Some people struggle with the Valve Index. They find it to be very front heavy and they put a counterweight on the back. I do not have that issue, but I know some people who do. And they said it's been an absolute godsend. So. Look into that if you find your Valve Index or other headset that you're using to be too front heavy and you need more pressure in the back. Okay, so we are moving into some bigger items. Now these might be specific to only a subset of users, but it might be a game-changing experience. If you are someone who suffers from motion sickness, can't play free locomotion games, you've been trying and just cannot adjust, the Cyber Shoes are most likely for you. They also have an added benefit of basically changing every game into cardio. You would be surprised at how much energy it takes just kicking your feet. You sit in this awesome chair back here, and I gotta say, not only is the chair great, I use it for all seated games all the time because it swings around nice and freely. It also comes with this great little floor mat that you might wanna use to just know your boundary. So when you're playing games standing, if you are slowly adjusting, that's an added little benefit. But the Cyber Shoes guys, they have a great level of support for titles on both PC VR and the Oculus Quest. And while they're not exactly for me, because I'm already tired just making this video, the idea of kicking my feet the entire time I'm playing Skyrim or Boneworks or anything else sounds absolutely exhausting. But I'm old and you're most likely younger than me. Okay, so let's get into our first huge item, and that is the Your Motion Simulation Chair. This thing has delivered some of the most immersive experiences I have ever had. There's only two complications. One, it is extremely expensive. And two, it's really only a benefit for people who play a lot of simulator titles. You also most likely wanna be someone who's on PC VR because you're gonna to wanna to use motion compensation and other peripherals like a steering wheel and a HOTUS to get the most out of this product. So if you are a huge simulator fan, I have to tell you, the experience you get from the Your Motion Controller Chair is absolutely amazing. This can move someone up to, I believe, 300 pounds, and it goes 360 degrees. It's just absolutely incredible. But as of right now, it's absolutely unusable for me because one, I don't really play a lot of simulation games, and two, I have an ongoing back issue. So getting into that chair is nightmare fuel for me until I really heal up. That being said though, I wish I can jump into it. Star Wars Squadrons, a lot of other titles are absolutely amazing, 
but this is a very niche product and the definitely not for the average user. I would love to see something like this in arcades. Yo also has a new model of this chair, which allows you to attach any chair of your choice onto it. It's a much better option. You guys should look into that. It is an amazing product. Now, another very specific item is gun stocks. I have tested gun stocks from Mammoth, 3D Gear, and ProTube. And I will say, guys, it's another item that's probably not really for me, but it might be game changing for you. And let me explain. So, this is a gun stock from Mammoth. You can basically adjust it to a shape that fits you the best. It's very similar to a lot of other gun stocks out there, just like ProTube. ProTube has the added benefit of something I haven't tested, but a lot of people have told me is excellent, which they have butt ends that have force feedback or even controller handles that have force feedback, something you might want to look into. Again, links and all that stuff are in the description. I'll pop up a little video. But for the most part, a gun stock is designed for you to attach your controllers to, and it will help your aim. If you are someone who plays very competitive games like Onward, Pavlov, I wouldn't say Population 1 because Population 1 is very arcadey and you really don't need this to help you aim. I've seen people aim absolutely amazing with sniper rifles and they don't need that extra control. But for some titles, it is absolutely great. The only problem is there's a bit of a learning curve. Uh, all the guns, like they won't feel like they're in the exact right spot and you're gonna have to adjust. So if you are someone who plays just Pavlov, just Onward a ton, you might wanna invest in one of these. It will most likely help your aim significantly, but just know there's a learning curve. And this item right here, specifically Mammoth, which I have used and I do like, was just a pain in the ass to build. It really was a headache. Let's go back to 3D gear. Now 3D gear is the most unique design I've ever used, but I have to say this is a prototype unit I was working with the creator. He was sending me modifications to this to try and get it right. And I have to say, my prototype unit was never right. I don't know the current state of 3D gear right now. Um, they make amazing designs and the 3D printing is top notch. And honestly, this is something you would buy even just for like a decorative piece. This is absolutely fantastic. However, I know they have changed the magnetic mounts. And I've heard they are significantly better yet, but I haven't tested it myself. My issue was when this was attached to the index controller and I pulled it into my shoulder, it would slip off way too much, actually hindering me in game. It comes off way, way too easy. I can't push it into my shoulder. Something that you would do if you fire guns in real life, you really want that stock up against your shoulder. Now that was for the valve index. On the Oculus Quest, based on the ring design, it was too strong of a connection. I couldn't disconnect to actually reload my gun to the point where I was afraid I was going to break my Oculus Quest controllers with this. So I hope for the best for 3D gear because this design is absolutely amazing. It's multi slotted so that unlike ProTube and the Mammoth one I showed you, it only goes back into one spot. This can go back into different spots. So if that interests you, if you like the design, I would just say look up some current reviews and see how much it's improved. I really hope it did because I was super intrigued by this. It's an awesome design, but this prototype that I tested wasn't quite there yet. Okay, so this one is function over form, I guess I'd say. This is the DECA move. Looks like something very simple and the thing is, it's fairly cheap, $50. And you, until you use it, you don't realize like how awesome it is. So this is a new locomotion option. Right now in games, we have three different modes for moving around. You have teleportation, you click, the game teleports you to a place, immersion breaking. The other option is to move based on your controller, free locomotion, which is controller track. So if I point this way, I go that way. So I, I, I'm being steered by my controller and the last option is being steered by your head, which is my preference. However, this allows you to use hip tracking. So this would go right onto your waist, works with basically all games. And 
that's what it uses for your orientation. And you say, okay, that's not a huge difference, but once I put it into action, I was blown away. And my example was Blade and Sorcery. There was a lot going on. I had enemies to my left and my right. I was trying to keep positional awareness and looking back and forth. If I was doing head tracking, that would be causing me to move back and forth. At the same time, uh, I wanted to head directly towards that enemy, but I also sidestepped just instinctually out of the way of an incoming fireball. And that sold me because the immersion level was right up here with two minutes of using this device. And what makes this even better is Deca Gear has a free model of this. If you have a cell phone, which I bet you do, you can download the app to your cell phone, strap it to your waist, maybe put it in your pocket. It's not as convenient as this. You know, if you have some clip on device for your cell phone, then it works better. Obviously this is more convenient, a little bit easier to use, but you have to pay for this. But there's a free version for your phone. So go download that app. Again, links in the description. Download that app, test it out, and you'll know if you maybe want to upgrade to this or just keep using your cell phone. Okay, the next accessory is one that I used to use a lot more, but after I broke my valve index cable, I stopped using it. Now, I didn't break my cable using this accessory. If you're wondering what it is, it's a pulley system. Pulley systems can actually make your VR experience much better if you're using a tethered headset. They are a little bit inconvenient at times. They can be a little hard to get just right, but when you do, it definitely helps your experience. The only fear is twisting that cable. Now again, I didn't damage my cable using the pulley system. I damaged it walking across the room forgetting I was wearing a headset like an idiot and just really yanked the cable and it was damaged. But I've been paranoid since then and really not using a pulley system very often at all. Also, you had to keep putting it up and down, which only takes a few seconds and my ceiling is low, but it was a you know frustration that I wanna go through. There are some other pulley systems that I do recommend you guys check out. This one is VR wire, and I'm really upset that I never put this up, and the creator of this, I spoke to him a few times, and I said, listen, do you want me to send it back? Because I just haven't been using a pulley system lately, and this one looked a little bit like a pain to set up, even though I checked it out again, it's not that bad. But it actually holds the cable much better than your traditional pulley system from Kiwi. So if you're looking for a pulley system, you might want to consider VR wire and there's a new one that I just received today that I'm going to be testing and I'll show off in the near future, which is this really cool design that uses a horn. Seems so simple, but it routes the cable up the front, keeping it away from your face and it uses a magnetic system so you can put the cable up and down in 10 seconds. I haven't started testing it yet. Design-wise, it looks absolutely great. Okay, so one of the best bangs for your buck, at least in my opinion, is this right here that I'm wearing right now, which is the B Haptic Tax Suit. This thing really ups the immersion level. It works with a ton of titles, but it's a bit expensive. I have to say though, out of everything we went over today, this is the only item I use constantly. I use it for every single game that supports it, every single time I'm playing. It takes two seconds to put on, it takes two seconds to install the software, and actually if you use an Oculus Quest, the software is built in. You'll just go into the settings of the game, click B Haptics, and the vest just works. There's also some other uses you could get out of this vest, but like I said earlier guys, if you want an in-depth you know, review, I have one of those and I'll post a card up. Now I do wanna mention the X16 suit. I'm currently wearing the X40. That is the number of motors it has. And this is the X16, which has 16 motors. And if you're gonna spend money on a product like this, the difference is $200. And I would say this one is absolutely worth the increase from 300 to $500. I know $500 is a really big ask, but if you want something that raises your immersion level that works with most of your favorite games, I highly recommend it. But go ahead, check out my full review. Okay, so our next product is actually replacing the Oculus Quest default strap. I know some people say it's fine and they have no issues with it, but I find it absolutely unusable. It 
just is uncomfortable, doesn't hold the headset on, you know, properly on my head, and I had to replace it. Now, there are official replacements from Oculus, but you might have heard about them snapping. Personally, I've been using mine since release, no issues, and I've actually torture tested it for a video. But it's definitely not the best or the cheapest option out there. Let's go over some more. So we're looking at the official one right here, and you can see it actually is, you know, a bit flimsy. Maybe I shouldn't do that. I might end up sacrificing it. This is uh, one from Kiwi, so it has a lot more support. It's a lot more rigid. There's a lot more cushioning in the top strap and back if that's something you're, you like. This was fine for me. I don't like too much padding on my head because I feel like it makes my head too hot. But if you are looking for more cushion, something that feels nicer, this is better, it's cheaper, and I've been told it's much more durable, but I haven't had it long enough compared to this. However, neither of these are my daily drivers. I'll show you what I've been using, which is another third-party headset. Okay, so this is another third-party headset. I can't remember the name of the company off the top of my head. You can look in the description. But why I'm using this one is because it has a battery dock. I just so happen to own this battery already. So I was just looking for a way to strap it to my Oculus Quest. And this was an absolutely amazing option. Now I will say it changes the pressure of the Oculus Quest and it actually pushes a lot more on the top of your forehead. It made it a little bit harder for me to stay in the sweet spot, but I did adjust after some time. It also has extra cushion compared to the Elite Strap on the Oculus Quest, the official one. But having something like this, the option to add a $20 battery right onto your headset, overall this entire package was probably about $50. And now I have a headset that lasts for six hours or more. For me, this is an amazing option and it's my daily driver. If you don't have a battery like me, you might wanna look at something like Rebuff Reality's Elite Battery Strap. I personally haven't used one, but I've heard a lot of good things. The battery pack is built right in. It's just as comfortable and hopefully it won't snap on you. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. And as always, I will see you guys on next time.